My name is Eric Lartigo. I'm a professor in radiation oncology in Lille, in France, and I'm the head of the uh, academic radiotherapy department at Centre Oscar Lambray. Centre Oscar Lambray is a cancer centre in France. It's one of the uh, 20 cancer centres specifically uh, dedicated to cancer care. Uh, the story with the cyber knife in my department started, by the way, uh, a bit more than two years ago because uh, there was in France a tender, a public tender made by the uh, National Cancer Institute to develop the technology of uh, radiosurgery and stereotactic radiotherapy with CyberKnife. Uh, the tender was in 2005 and we succeeded to be one of the three French centers with CyberKnife. The three centers were in Nice, in Nancy and in my own department in Lille. The CyberKnife was installed in uh, early 2007 and we started first treatment in June 2007, on the 14th of June 2007. Why a CyberKnife, by the way, and why such a machine in a, in a busy radiotherapy department? We treat roughly 3,000 patients a year in my department. A CyberKnife because we had a long experience with the, uh, stereotactic radiotherapy and we, with radiosurgery. We started more than 10 years ago by developing intracranial radiosurgery on the LINAC. Then we moved to a gamma knife five years ago and we wanted to develop the technology of radiosurgery outside of the brain. It's relatively easy in the brain because tumors are not moving too much. It's much more difficult outside of the brain. So going to extracranial radiosurgery was for us a very, very interesting topic. The first thing we did, and I think it's a very important message for potential users in CyberKnife, was to have a very strict uh, clinical program. And we developed a very strict clinical program dealing with ray radiation and neck tumors, dealing with liver tumors, and dealing with spine. And this is a very important way of putting such a new equipment. It's not a, a classical LINAC, a CyberNAC. It's a very different machine which gives you the opportunity to develop new topics and new treatments. Uh, so uh, we started with ray radiation in Edenek because this is for us a very, very important issue. We have a large number of Edenek patients in my department because we are living in a region with a high incidence of Edenek cancer. By the way, the highest in the world. So having a machine able to ray radiate was very important. Ray radiating meaning precision and being able to track a tumor when the tumor is potentially moving. So we did that for the neck and we moved to liver. Liver is a very interesting topic for radiation oncologists because it's very, very difficult to treat liver tumors because they are moving with breathing of the patient and they are sometimes relatively large in size and being able to treat these tumors is not so easy with classical isocentric LINAX. The cyber gives you the opportunity to treat such tumors because the way the dose is delivered, non-isocentric, non-coplanar, is definitely in favor of this machine due to the architecture of the machine. And going to liver was very, very interesting and we have demonstrated with my colleague Xavier Mirabel very good results in primary hepatocarcinoma and in secondary liver metastasis. Nowadays we have two new topics for cyber. First one is lung and we have used the CyberNAF in lung tumors for now uh, two year, one year, sorry. And this is very, very interesting using Excite Lung, which gives you the opportunity not to have to put fiducials in, but to track tumor just by the image without fiducials. And now we are entering the field of prostate. And prostate is very, very interesting topic, being able to mimic IDOS red brachy or to mimic IMRT with a cyber in prostate. We have two programs in prostate, one for exclusive prostate treatment in relatively old patients, in more than 70 years of age patients. Why? Because these patients request to have a curative treatment and it has to be relatively short and CyberNAF is giving you the opportunity to treat shortly and boosting and we have a program in combine IMRT and CyberBoost in intermediate risk group patients. So I, I, I would say to conclude, uh, what we did in, in the last two years with the CyberKnife was the capacity, the ability to have a new equipment, developing new kind of indications, ray radiation, liver, 
prostate, lung, moving targets, lung liver, very tricky targets needing high precision prostate or high precision in ray radiation. So I think the program we developed was okay and I would say that uh, this is a very important once again to start with, starting with such an equipment meaning is of course definition of a very very precise uh, clinical program. Thank you.